Can our chatbots Telegram, Slack be better with buttons and interactivity? I sincerely think so. And uh, what I want to see is that uh, I want to see that by the end of this, you have an understanding of how we might do this in Telegram, creating buttons, um, how they get added into the messages coming back from the bot. And if you click them, how do we get behavior to happen? Um, and then how do we update the message so that the user can see that something's happened? So this is kind of in two steps. Uh, once with the, the, the user myself, just talk to the bot saying, this is what I need. The bot being a task bot, uh, interpreted that as uh, we need to, that it uh, needs to offer a button for tasks. Um, we could have also used audio, so it would have done transcription. Um, for example, uh, I need milk, bread, and cake. Ooh, and some Vegemite. And then it uh, offers us a task button. When we click the button, the button disappears temporarily, so we don't click it again. And then it uh, goes in the background, creates our um, creates our new uh, task. In, in this case, it's in the CRM, but it could be um, anywhere that you do tasks, including Apple Reminders. And, uh, and then, uh, not that one, it was grocery shopping. And uh, there you go, and, and then it produced a list. Um, this is what we're gonna build today. I think being able to add buttons and uh, change the behavior interactivity in a thing like a Telegram bot or a Slack bot is really a first class feature that uh, makes people feel welcome and feels like the bot uh, is, is there for them. Um, and it's a lot easier to click a button and feel like you, you know, you're interacting directly. So this is what we're gonna to build today. If this is interesting, then uh, stick around. Now, uh, this is what it's gonna look like at the end. Um, and I'm gonna delete half of this and build it for us. But essentially the top half, the top two thirds is uh, supporting, this is from the previous videos, this is gonna support um, taking a voice message in the top row. Uh, this, the middle row is where it takes in a plain text message. And then the bottom row is how the button works. So this is pretty interesting. So let's, uh, let's build it first. I'm gonna delete uh, all of this. And then I will delete this as well. So this is essentially what we had in our previous videos where we supported uh, receiving a voice message, transcribing it using Grok or OpenAI. And then uh, we, uh, now that we've got the text, we can send it back to the user so that they know that the, what the bot thinks it was because it might be terrible. Um, transcription isn't always perfect, especially if the audio um, isn't being picked up well, or if you have a bizarre accent from uh, some far-flung British colony. And so uh, this is just, uh, it's good to have feedback. It's good to show the user what it is that they, you, they the, the, the bot thinks uh, or the transcription got. So these two are essentially the same. Um, we're just uh, sort of sending back uh, the message um, with a little pre the, the bit there. Uh, and this one, perhaps a less, less necessary to send back that message because you did type it. But nonetheless, this is what we're doing too. So either way, either path that we take, you'll get the same sort of feedback from, from the bot, which is to repeat. Now, what we want is to be able to uh, receive a bot. And it's interesting, I, I, I think this is interesting because it wasn't obvious to me, um, because many other um, make workflows we do have webhooks where you have one scenario and then off to a system. And when that system wants to call back, we make a second scenario with a webhook. In the Telegram uh, bot world, uh, we don't have to do that. The, the button press actually comes back in as a, another message, another sort of interaction. And so we're just gonna look out for that um, and, uh, and watch for it. So let's find out what a button looks like. Uh, in fact, I think this last interaction, because I clicked and I created, um, was a button press. And you can see this callback query is uh, available to us. And, uh, and it's here that was how we determined that it was a button press um, and what message button was pressed. And so in here, um, this is the original message that was button, because there could be lots of messages and lots of buttons. And in lots of conversations, your bot might be used in many places. So we need to find out which one was pressed. Um, and so this is the message that had the button that was pressed. And so we can sort of go back and find that it was in that chat ID that uh, that was pressed on this 
uh, message, uh, which would have been an assistant message. As you can see, it says is bot. Um, and so this is how we're going to uh, discover our, uh, our economy or what it is that that button meant. And finally, uh, because that message might have had multiple buttons on it, uh, which one was pressed? And down here, um, the data create task is represents the button that was pressed. So just to recap, how did the button get there in the first place? So when we, uh, when you use the telegram uh, module for creating a message or editing a message, if you scroll down, you'll see there's a advanced settings. And when you open that up, you'll find that there's a reply markup and you might need to, uh, to, to build that there. Uh, I'll just copy and paste that. But there is also a symbol reply markup, which allows you to, you know, a more uh, um, click button uh, method to, uh, to build out, um, for example, array of things we could have create a task, um, create a task. And so this might also be a great way to, uh, to, to do that. Let's just see what we get. So that's that. And now if we change it back to here, no, it disappeared. Um, so that might've also been a good path. Um, I have hopes and dreams of this being a, a programmatically built out to figure out what buttons to offer in a more complex. Um, so for the moment, I'm going to stick with the, uh, the hand, hand coded here. But either way, this is how you add a button. And this value here, the create task, so it says callback data, create task. This was the value that came back to us uh, when we re-entered this scenario here. So between knowing which button was pressed and knowing which assistant message or which bot message was being interacted with, uh, we have hopefully everything we need to do something with that action. And so, uh, so this path down here, we only want to take this path if it's a bot message. So let's add a filter. So a button, I said button. Um, a button pressed. And uh, for the moment, we'll go with that. If this callback query ID has a value, then we'll assume the button was pressed. Okay, that'll take us down there. Now, um, this leads to how, because this is now a second run through the scenario. So uh, three minutes ago, the person left a message and a button was generated over here. Eventually the person comes back and clicks that button. How does the next time we go through the scenario figure out what that button meant, what we should do with it? To do that, uh, what we're gonna use is the data store. Um, I don't think there's anything to save here. The data store is a part of Make that uh, is available to use. You could of course use Google Sheets or an uh, uh, Airtable or any other database um, that you wish. Um, I don't think I have reason to store the data anywhere else. So we'll, we'll go with, with data structures um, and data stores. So what we want to do is use it, and this is a, a just purely built into, uh, into make.com, is we want to add a record. So anytime um, we receive a message and the bot replies, we want to pair those up and store them. Now, I have already created a data store, which I will uh, have a look at and see what's in it. Um, and, but it wasn't that difficult. Uh, you create a data store, with a data structure and you describe uh, what I described as four fields that uh, are all text. If we go and look at it over here, I can edit it. Um, this was all built as I was building it out. So it wasn't, it was very obvious. I just, even though these are probably numbers, um, they might be very long and big numbers. So we'll just assume that they're text. Uh, we'll make them all required. So we want the chat, which where in the telegram universe was this conversation being happened because these message IDs are relative to the chat ID. Um, this is a very big number and this could be a very small number. And so this was the bot's message. I'm gonna use the sort of AI language of the assistant, but it was the, the bot, the message created by the bot. Um, this was the message that preceded that, which was the user's message. And this was the original user's text, which uh, might've been, they might've typed it or it might've been the transcript. And this seems to be sufficient. Um, so this is a data structure. Wrapping around that is a data store, which is like a database um, storing those values. You can see it's got six entries. Let's go and have a look. 
from some previous tests um, for recording. You can see that I had, uh, they're all in the same chat, different, different user message, followed by a different assistant message or bot message, and you can sort of see the uh, numeric, numerically sequential as one came after the other. And this was the text that either came, either typed, or was uh, recorded. And then finally, we have here uh, wiring this up. So uh, let's go back. Um, let's uh, collapse all of these. So these are the four uh, modules that precede here. So um, number one, uh, number four, number five, and number seven. Um, if you zoom in, you can sort of see they have uh, some internal numbers, which, uh, and so we can reference any one of those four, one, four, five, and seven. Um, we'll go back and we'll find the chat ID here. The user message is here. And the user text, well, we're on the uh, transcript path at the moment, so we'll go to the Grok module and we'll use its result as the, uh, the original text. And then the bot replied, or the assistant replied, or the make scenario replied, and it sent this message with this message ID. And so that will store, uh, we'll rename this, store uh, conversation. We'll call that the conversation, uh, a human message, a bot message, and a reply, uh, and uh, sort of all those IDs. And similarly, if we get a text, we need to duplicate this, um, similar but different. Similar, we want to put it in the same data store. I'll come back to the key in a second. Um, let's collapse those. So now uh, there's only two um, modules in this path. There was the original, there's the chat ID, the user's message, and the user's text comes directly from that original message. And then the bot replied with, um, just regurgitated the message back with buttons. But we do need that so that um, we can uh, edit that message, delete the button, update the message that we created. Okay. And rename store conversation. So now, either way, uh, either path we take, we now have the same values stored. Um, if you're sort of, this path, this idea of is, is, uh, is pretty common pattern, um, it now allows us to pull these back out. So finally, when the user uh, clicks a button, we come back into this scenario on a second run. Um, it'll now come down here. And of course, now we need to get these values back out. So let us, uh, what do we want? Search, update, get a record. And to fetch a record, we need a key, something unique that will, can be built based on what we know. And the reason we haven't described the key yet is I uh, wanted to have this conversation about um, the key. So the key, uh, it needs to be unique and it needs to be something that we can rebuild um, later on. So when someone clicks that uh, button, uh, let's have a look what we have. We have an ID. Um, this is unique to the fact they press the button. So it's not really, uh, not something we knew in advance. Um, the from, I mean, the, the person who sent the original message, that's interesting. Um, but I think what's mostly interesting is probably this. Um, this message ID, the assistance message ID is probably uh, the most interesting thing because that's going to have the, uh, that's the message that we need to update that's going to represent the original text. Um, but of course, if this bot is being used in multiple uh, conversations, uh, that won't be unique. So we also need this chat ID. So what I think we'll do is we will uh, come up with a key that it's our key, we made it up, but we will uh, build it from the chat ID and then the message ID. And I'll just come up with some syntax that uh, just separate them with some slashes. I just like slashes today. Um, and we need to pull it from the data store. So rename fetch conversation. So with that in mind, this is the key we expect to find. We now need to use that key when we store the conversation. 
So uh, let's collapse all these. So the key was the chat double slash assistant message. Um, and so we are here, so we want the chat message double slash and then the assistance message. No, this is that's that's the user's message. And then um, echo. This is the assistance message. And in fact, I'm getting feeling like let's rename this. Let's call this um, rename assistant bot message. We've got two names for it. It's an assistant and it's a bot. Um, assistant bot message okay good 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 and similarly here we need to give use the same key uh, let's collapse all of those we'll get the chat ID from here and the system message from there of course uh, we could of course uh, use the chat ID from here as well they are the same chat ID I feel good. I feel good. We should now be able to start that process again. We should be able to, um, uh, uh, users should be able to send a message. The bot will reply with a button. We should be able to click that button and come down here and it will retrieve the conversation. So let's give that a red hot go. Um, I need cake. Okay, so that went through the first time and it generated the button. Um, And it went down here, so it was a plain text message that so comes through here, and we can see that we stored, um, and there was our key. So now, if we uh, pop this into development mode one more time, and we'll click the button, you can see that it's now come down this path, and it has retrieved those values. So now we know that the message that the original user. So if I click this button, I now know that they either. Uh, typed or said I need cake so we're looking fantastic um, now one nice thing to do uh, we want to pr prevent the user from pressing the button multiple times that might not be what we want so what we can do is we can edit the message and take the button away edit a text message um, we are editing a chat message we now know what the chat ID is because we stored it uh, well, actually, it would have also come from from here. Uh, in fact, both of these we could have got them from the um, from uh, um, from the callback as well. But for the moment, we now have them here in our uh, retrieve record. Um, and so, what we're going to do, uh, what we're going to do, is to delete the assistant message. And in order to do that, we really need um, to either we could rebuild the text message, or we could copy it from um, the original. Um, so it happens that the original message is here. Oops. So we could we could do that. And as I said, all of these actually um, we could have pulled from the webhook rather than using our uh, our, our assistant message, but uh, that's okay. Um, parse mode. We'll stick with Markdown in case there was a reason. Actually, I'm not sure that we've talked about that yet. Uh, we don't currently have a reason for markdown. We will when we want to do the link shortly. So what does this do? Um, now note what what note that how this is different. What's different is that we are not having any reply markup. So whatever buttons were there before, we're now editing the message without buttons. So it's the same message, no buttons. And what that will look like is that it will remove the buttons. Let's put that into run mode and we should now be able to click that button one more time. And it did not delete my chat ID. How did I mess that up? Um, right. Oh, okay, actually, so here we need to use, firstly, we need to use the right, um, I don't know why it can't. We need to use the right, um, right bot. Um, and uh, we need to pull this from callback message chat ID and callback 
callback query message message ID. Press save, run this one more time, press this button. And as you saw, the button has gone away. What actually happened was we edited the message to have the same content, but no buttons. The net effect was the button's gone away, the user cannot click it a second time. Now we want to um, figure out what, based on all the things they said, what is the task? And for that, we can use AI. Um, we'll use the Grok uh, module with uh, the JSON mode. And um, uh, I really wish I had uh, uh, copied and pasted this. Um, in fact, we'll borrow it from somewhere else. Tell you what, we can make this up. How hard is this? Um, now, when you first use this uh, module, uh, it does sort of document the gist of, of how this should work because there's a certain language you want to use. You want to describe an example of what the, uh, the JSON looks like. Um, and you want to use the word JSON in your system prompt uh, when you're using the Grok JSON uh, chat completion module. So um, you, the user has described a task and you will extract you will summarize the task title and to do items. JSON should look like this. Uh, we'll call it um, a task. We'll give it a nice capital letter because that looks nice in um, that looks nice in, in make. Uh, task, we want the title. Create a um, fetch the dog uh, for example if the user's message was I need to fetch the dog from uh, from his friend's house the title might be fetch the dog and the contents or body might be, and we'll put a little asterisk, go to friend's house, pick up dog. And there, that might be the type of content we wish this to be. Uh, so that this in, in sort of AI language, you call this uh, a few shot prompt. So we're sort of giving it one example of given a certain input, what the output might be. Um, now, where does this message come from? Luckily, we stored the message in the data store. So we'll pull that from there. Um, probably not many reasons to restrict that too much. In fact, we won't bother. Um, give that a name, rename, um, uh, build task. Title and contents. That's that. Now we'll give that, um, we'll run that one more time. Uh, I've lost my button, so I need to start again. I need cake and drinks. So this is a text message, so it's come through this path. We'll run that again. Click the button. The button disappears and we have, our AI has produced a task, get party supplies, buy cake, buy drinks. Pretty awesome. Finally, we can now pop this in our um, task to do application, wherever it is that you wish these to go. I've been using ClickUp. Um, I will create a task. Uh, the great thing about Make is there's so many places that you could connect this to. Notion, uh, probably even iMessage reminders through the phone, um, Salesforce, all sorts of things. Folder, folderless, always feel sad. Folderless, bot tasks. And I've already created this. This was just a, a vanilla um, to-do list that um, all I did was just create a list. It's just the default. Um, and then the task name, we'll pull this straight out of our AI. T 
the title and the contents is there. Um, interesting and we'll assume it's marked down. Interesting uh, thing for you to think about is how might you map a Telegram user to a user in your CRM? Um, if I was to click Dr. Nick, you can see that it's looking for a number. That's a number that is special inside of, of uh, click CRM, uh, click up. Um, and of course, uh, over here, uh, we have um, you know, the original from user. So that's this number and that number, totally different. This is a telegram number mapping to Dr. Nick. This is a ClickUp number mapping to Dr. Nick. I'll leave it to you to uh, figure how you might map those together so you can automatically assign tasks to people. And uh, rename create task. And finally, um, oh, we need to we need a reference. So we'll, we'll run this through. But the last thing I want to do is to update the message so that we put the link in. Okie dokie. Um, I need cake and drinks. Uh, run that one more time. Click the button. It has created the task here, get cake and drinks. Um, nice bullets because it formatted it with bullet points um, as per our suggestion. And that happens to mean something in Markdown. And so ClickUp has turned that into nice little bullet points, which is lovely. The thing I'm looking for now is the URL. Somewhere in here, I expect to find a URL. There it is there. If I was to visit that URL, um, I will be taken to that task. And so I think it might be nice to now update, update the message one last time. Um, add link to task um, with a link to the task. So everything's the same. We still don't need buttons. But what we will is we'll add a task created and then a link to that um, to the task that we created. Now that would just print that ugly URL. Uh, because we've set this to be parsing in markdown mode, we can use a little bit of markdown syntax. And this is how we make, oops, I've got that wrong. Um, this is how we create uh, a URL, uh, a pretty looking URL. This would be the title and this will be the link. And we'll add a little bit of white space. And we are now finished. I will now turn this on. It was actually already on. Um, we will go uh, YouTube, create task bot, save that. And now we'll watch this uh, from, um, let's just get rid of that incomplete task. So now we can watch this uh, flow through um, in production. All right. I want to create a YouTube video about Telegram bots and buttons because I think that would be awesome. There we go. That's not sure when bot says two S's, but, uh, and so now you can see that it, uh, it hasn't yet. Let's just refresh that history. There it is. There's the, the first path through. Click the ta create task. You can see it's running. And now we get a link. Create YouTube video about Telegram bots and buttons. Open it. And there we have it. So we create the assistant message, the bot message. Uh, with a button, we then drop the button and then we update it with the link. I just think this is fantastic. And you can imagine all the things you can do um, within Telegram, within um, the uh, or any of the Slack or, or any place where you've got interactivity. It's just such a nice experience for you end users um, to be able to talk, to 
be able to click buttons that have more defined behavior and map that defined behavior to certain activities. I hope you really enjoyed this this present this uh, video. It's, uh, it's really interesting stuff that we're discussing. Please uh, take a moment to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got a lot of great things coming and uh, it's been fabulous uh, to share them with you. I'll see you next time.